here's the thing. I was doing an ab workout. My stomach is on fire, and I did like a leg crunch thing. I like lifted them up, <laughs> lifted them up into the air, and I just I let a giant fart. <laughs> a giant fart. I swear to God. And there's like four or five people in the room. I think everyone had headphones on, luckily, but it was an absolute ripper. So I <laughs> fuck pre workout. Thank God no one heard that. Welcome back to another episode of the Moving Forward Podcast. Today, we are joined by our two brand new producers, Logan Russo and Adam McAlay. If you guys would like to introduce yourselves, give give a nice hello to the people. Hello. Hi, hey, everybody. Yes, that Happy is a – oh, okay. Sorry. That was a great introduction to Adam and Logan. Uh, they plan on doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, uh, doing a couple different segment, segment with, segments with us that uh, we will be talking about later on. But uh, – the first one was kind of an idea by Adam, and we really like it. So uh, kind of a guessing game for the listeners. Uh, we'll be doing now a word of the day. So the word of the day, um, Adam will give us a word, and it is our job, Sean, Mike, and I, to use that word. Um, we can use it in any kind of capacity. It changes each time. It can be something really easy or it can be something really, really hard. Um, Adam and Logan also have the opportunity to veto our use of the word if they think that we either used it wrong or it was way way too obvious that it was that word um i'm a small-minded man so some of these bigger words might be a little bit more difficult uh for me but with that being said let's get into this episode and we're going to start where every pistons fan was watching last night Cade versus jalen green sean what what were your takeaways there's been a lot of overreaction so far about jalen green deserving to be the number one pick when it was Cade. what'd you think last night uh, honestly, while watching the game, I had a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, obviously, I think Cade played really good. He showed what he was made of. He had a lot of highlight plays, so he got the conversation going on Twitter. He wasn't getting roasted. I think both players played really well, but I also do think Jalen Green made a lot more mistakes that people aren't talking about. He had a lot of bad turnovers. He looked really uncomfortable in the first half. I don't know if anyone else noticed that, but... A lot of bad turnovers, a lot of bad passes, took some shitty shots. I don't know. He got to the line a lot. I mean, that makes him a scorer, obviously, but I don't Did he score that much? I feel like he didn't even make that many buckets. Am I correct? It was so many it was so many free throws. Yeah. So many. I, mean, I wasn't able to itself, but I wasn't able to watch the game yesterday and the way I saw it on Twitter, um, Jalen Green is Jordan Incarnate. And Cade is Kwame Brown. So oh, right. how is that true? Did you guys feel that way? Not yes. Cade is a bona fide scrub. No, I didn't think that way at all. I think um, there was a few mistakes that Cade made. He did shoot a lot more shots than Jalen Green, which I figured would actually be the other way around. If I would have saw the shooting percentages or the shot attempts from the other players flip-flopped, it would have made more sense to me. But I feel like Jalen Green and the Rockets in general in that game were getting a lot more fouls for than the Pistons. I don't know if that meant the Pistons weren't driving to the lane hard enough or anything, but it felt like the whistle was being blown for the Rockets and Jalen Green a whole lot that game. And I think that really boosted his stats. I think if there's one overarching point that needs to be like said, I think Kay definitely needs to get to the rim more. He needs to stop settling for jump shots because that will help that free throw problem because – other than maybe one drive in the corner, I remember he got like a jump ball call on it. I don't remember him attacking too much. And when he did attack, he got easy layup. So I'd like to see him get to the rim a little bit more, try to go for that contact, which Jalen Green is already good at. But we also got to think Jalen Green's played a year of professional basketball already. So he knows what to do with these professional refs. He knows how to get these calls. And I think there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for, for Cade getting into the league learning how to get these calls, learning how to work these refs. So I think we got to give a little bit of a grace period and step back and realize it's just summer league. Like we can't overreact too much right now. Yeah, I mean, different player, but the way I've seen it on Twitter, Killian Hayes has two left feet 
and he should be taken out back and shot. How did you guys feel about that? I completely agree. I'm right there. I completely you. disagree. I'm with you. I, I, I don't get it. He had a lot of really nice pull-up jumpers this game. I really liked the way he was aggressive, especially in the first quarter. He had a lot of midi shots that are really good. His three-point game is atrocious. I'll give anybody who hates on Kate for that. But his defense is really, really good, and his playmaking is amazing. He had a lot of really nice plays again last night. Um, he took on the challenge of guarding Jalen Green a lot. I think he was probably more effective than Cade was against him. Um, I, I don't think it's time to shoot Killian and take him back out and shoot him, but he's starting to become a guy for me who needs to develop a three-point game or he's going to get left in the dust. So he's going to have to start really focusing on that. But he just looks scared to even take open jump shots, yeah. and that's the part that's concerning to me. That's the part I want to bring up. He just looks so uncomfortable with the ball. He looks like a guy, he looks like a football player that just hopped on the basketball court and is trying to play offense. He looks so wildly uncomfortable shooting the ball sometimes and getting up shots. But on the flip side, I thought his defense was elite last night. Every single time he guarded Jalen Green, he wasn't going anywhere. Joshua for Christopher, he wasn't going anywhere. I was impressed with that. And obviously the playmaking's always been there. That's what one of his main attributes. So I don't know. I was on the overreaction train last night with Killian, but after day to reflect on it, I don't know. Got to give it some more time, I guess, but yeesh, that offense, not good. Yeah, if there's a guy that I want to overreact to, it's it's Shangun. He might be end up being one of the best players in this draft, and for them to get him at 16 is an absolute steal. Like, I know Tyler Cook is bad, and I think all Pistons fans are hoping that somehow Luka Garza makes this roster over – um, Tyler Cook. I don't know if it's going to happen, but he was torching everybody. He showed that he had a really good deep three in that game. He showed that he's not afraid to hit three point shots. Like, like Shangu in a 16 might end up being the absolute steal of this draft. I had him at, at like nine and 10 in some of my mock drafts. I really yeah. wanted, I thought he was going to go to the Spurs. I didn't think he would slip that far. He's really good. The Rockets killed this draft overall. Every yeah. single player they drafted impressed me, and we haven't even seen Garuba yet, the dude from Spain that already plays like a five, six-year professional, apparently. So they really killed it, and Sangun was wildly impressive. At times, I kind of thought he was the most impressive player on the court last night. No, the only buddy, anybody more impressive was the one Luca Garza move where he absolutely put that dude in the cycle, and I thought that he was Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, yeah I thought he was, was Dirk. Clean as hell. Luca looks good. I'll say it. He does look good. Yeah. He looks slower than molasses, but his offensive game is pretty ridiculous. He can get buckets. Yeah, slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. Yep. Well, the Pistons have started off super slow in this summer league. They'll play again on Friday against the Knicks. Until then, we will now go to Love Hate. We're switching up the order a little bit. We're moving on to Love Hate. So, you know what, um, Michael? Give us a start. Give us your first love. Okay. I can give you my first hate first. Okay. I was having trouble coming up with loves. I need another, another moment. But my first hate is no-show socks. Um, I've been sweating them up a storm. I've lost a million of them. I've bought so many of them in the last week and a half, and I've lost half of the pairs I've bought. Yep. That's how it works. I wouldn't even get those. Just I'm not even a low fan. top Nikes. Yeah, they it's only low top socks. It never no show socks. I don't get those either. I feel like my ankles would constantly be bothered by my shoes. If they're not, you get used to it. I don't want. I don't want the sock poking out of a low cut shoe. I don't like it. It bothers so me. That's the great thing about the Nike ones. They barely show. Yeah, but barely show isn't the same as no show. Well, well then I don't it go to the seems store like and get barely show socks. It seems like you should just live with your issue then. It seems like you're choosing to put yourself in this hell. I don't know if I really feel that bad. I'm not asking you to feel bad for me. I'm asking you to acknowledge that it's a problem. They slip down, they fall, and I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna wear shoes barefoot. I'm not gonna go commando with my heels out. No, bigger. only psych only psychopaths wear shoes without any socks. I did yeah. that for a whole summer. <laughs> psychopath. It's disgusting. I it was dis I no, that's why I'm I'm gonna Bang on that drum because it's honestly awful. I'm ruined like three pairs of shoes. You probably had algae growing in between your toes. No, I did. I think I had some problems going on. I really started some shit. I ruined three pairs of shoes. My feet were disgusting. 
I don't know. I also tried no show socks and mine they're gone. I don't know what happens to them. <laughs> they're how are, also gone. How are they're you guys both here. just yeah, how are you guys both just losing these socks? Do they just fall off your feet and you don't realize it or I, I, I think they slowly crunch down the foot until they reach the end of the shoe and then they just vanish forever. They disintegrate. Yeah, I think that's I the think, best I think no, yeah, I think they just dissolve. No show socks. <laughs> They well, don't they last. Shrink they up. don't, they don't yeah. last more than three months. When you they put them a, through the dryer, they come lifespan. out. They come yeah. out this big, and you got to stretch them out. You can't even fold them together, so you throw them in your drawer, and then you lose them. They're just gone. Mm. Somebody takes them out of your drawer. Potentially your girlfriend. I don't know. We're still investigating that. Um, <laughs> if I find any no-show socks in her area, though, she will have hell to pay well the best thing is you can just take a trip to any journey store and you can have one of your salespeople <laughs> pedal them onto you because every single time you go into that store they just push no show socks i swear to god every single time i've been in there yeah they're like a crash dealer, dealer. Mm. Mm. but that was yeah. my hate no show socks wow. okay i'm gonna move on to my hate um it's it's the end of summer some people would say it's the hottest part of summer it's usually july sometimes it's august and living in a college town uh there's a lot of places here that don't have air conditioning so my hate right now is the fact that my girlfriend has moved into another house where there is absolutely zero air conditioning and for a person like me especially when you're trying to sleep i cannot sleep in a warm room I like it cold. It's really enjoyable. She says, oh, the fan's on. And I just can't do it. It's awful and I hate it. And I don't understand why people don't like a nice room where it's like 68 degrees, a fan is blowing in your face. That's that's the best way to sleep. And anybody who disagrees with me, I, I don't I, I don't value your opinion. I wait. Wait, go I have, ahead. I have, I, have a, I have a quick question. So she doesn't sleep with a fan on? She sleeps like with just her own thoughts? That sounds horrible. Break yeah. up with her. Yeah. Break it off, Jake. <laughs> need to do I, it right I, now. I, she has my right now. She has my fan because I need a fan when I sleep. So I bought her one. Right, but, but like, she doesn't like to use it. No. If wow. I'm not there. She's not using it. Wow. That's psychopath behavior. And, and, and <laughs> yeah, it would, when you when you sleep with her, do you sleep with one eye open? Because you should. Yeah. I should start. <laughs> you should. I feel your pain though. I don't have air conditioning either. And half the sleep is on fire all the time. I have time, to sleep so. like yeah. a bear in like a cave. I need no less than fifty degrees in my room. No blankets. I just need to just lay curl up on a hardwood floor. That's yeah. the only way I can sleep. I can't sleep any other way. If there's if it's above seventy five degrees, I'm sweating bullets all night. Exactly. I don't get it. If I could sleep in the cheese drawer of my refrigerator, I would do it. <laughs> I just can't wait for the dead of winter for when I can be like, she'd be like, no, not the fan. I'm like, no need. Just open both windows. It's zero degrees outside. And My I'm favorite like, move in the winter. Perfect temperature. Beautiful. I can't, yeah, I wish I got the sweet release of that. It's going to be like a chilly 82 here. and I'm still going to be sweating my nuts off. Oh, well, All right. Warm your room. All right, Sean, what's your first hate? All right. Um, so it's more of a story, but overall I blame it all on pre-workout. So I hate pre-workout. So I was in the gym today and every time I drink pre-workout, my stomach is just on fire. There's just a lot of things start rumbling. A lot of things start mixing. And I constantly have to shit. Like that's just a thing that happens when I go to the gym, I drink pre-workout and then also I have to shit. Today I tried to avoid this whole dance and I just tried to get through my workout without having to take a 20 minute siesta in the bathroom of the gym and just sweat and I hate sh yeah that's a separate argument but here's the thing I was doing an ab workout my stomach is on fire and I did like a leg crunch thing I like lifted them up <laughs> lifted them up into the air and I just I let a giant fart <laughs> a giant fart I swear to God and there's like four or five people in the room. I think everyone had headphones on, luckily, but it was an absolute ripper. So I <laughs> fuck pre workout. Thank God no one heard that. They probably did. Did you check the drawers? Was it clean? <laughs> it was a it was like a code brown. I'll tell you that. It was a, <laughs> probably there. It wasn't a complete misfire, but god damn it, it was close. Jesus. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what's the worst is when like you're not sure about it and like you go to check. You go to the bathroom and you just see like a little scarec of shit in the bottom of your underwear. No, no, the worst the worst part is making that loud noise out your ass and then people are already staring at you and then you're like, I have to check if I shit myself. So you're just trying to like slyly try to like maybe be like Yeah. Did I did I shit my pants? Is this fart lingering maybe a little too long? Is there a sherrick of p- shit in my pants? You son of a bitch. You son of a did it. What do you mean? <laughs> Logan, uh, Adam, can I, you guys... can I challenge that? Uh, yep. Let's go to the review <laughs> for everyone. Context. Sarah, what the fuck? Word of the day. <laughs> Logs muted. Logs muted. Okay, what's what's the final verdict then? I think it was too similar. That was. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry, Jake. I had to throw the flag on it. Okay, hand up, hand up on me, hand up on me. I didn't hear Mike say it. And then when I finally thought of it, I was like, oh, that's a genius idea. So, you know what? I accept that ruling. Um, my bad. My bad. Okay. All right. I like it. It's okay. Integrity. When you get like a buzzer, like a programming note, when you get yeah. like a buzzer or like a sound effect whenever we hit the word of the day. Okay. Yeah. You make well, a little ding in post. I'm now, I'm now really sad. So, Adam or Logan, do either <laughs> of you have a hate to share? Not really. I had that incident that happened on Monday with my brother's dog. That was pretty bad. I would hate that. Sad. Yeah, I, I hated hate that. that too. Yeah. I hated that text I received. Like, <laughs> brother's dog got hit by a truck and I was yeah. like, no other context. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. He's all good though now. He's he's going going well. My dog got hit by a car and he's just fine. Oh yeah, just fine. He ran it off. <laughs> I should have hit him. <laughs> I would have put it in reverse after hitting him. No one knows Ricky like I know Ricky. <laughs> All right, Logan, do you have a hate to share? You're still muted. Still muted. Logan hates muting his mic. Yeah, Logan this guy hates, hates microphones. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. A little bit longer. All right. Yeah, my hate this mic doesn't work good. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, my hates this computer. Kind of the same thing. Um, Technology. So- yeah, technology. Not good with it. It's an older kind of computer. I'm trying to download some iMovie, um, GarageBand kind of thing on here, and I can't do it because I don't have uh, the most recent update on my computer. I have an Apple. I have a MacBook Air, and um, if you clear out enough space, you can download the whatever newest up software server there is. Um, so I tried doing that, and turns out I can't. Uh, delete enough space because I have a game that I downloaded in high school um, that is 12 and a half gigabytes in size that takes up half half my whole computer computer space so I am not able to delete that game at all it's just plugged into my computer right now Um, so this is the computer I'm stuck with with the same thing and I can never download anything else on it again it seems like so that's my game that that game will follow you until you die yeah, and yeah. So I'm just gonna be really good at that game when I'm 80 years old and have this computer still with the same software on it. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, it might be time for a new computer. It sounds like. Yeah, it might be, especially if you're gonna be a producer. <laughs> <laughs> or like when you go yeah, to the real so, job, they're like, "Download Excel." You're like, "I can't." I can't. I, I, have, I, I, I have, cannot I, get rid of this fishing game. I cannot. I have Fishing Pro 2012, though, if that. Sounds good for the application. I can catch largemouth bass if you want. I can't yeah. catch any numbers. All Logan does is catch virtual pike and do Excel sheets on paper. <laughs> yeah. I can reconcile accounts payable and uh, catch lake trout, and that's about it. God damn it, that's the life. Well, that transition really nicely into my hate because uh my hate is actually logan taking a quiz before we start recording um so we set aside this time to really figure out what we're going to do before this podcast even starts and as much as i love logan he loves to pull the perfect time of we decided 8 30 this is when we're going to start he first has to take a shower and then that happens and then he's like don't worry guys in the middle of the meeting before we start i just have to take a quick quiz and then i hear him reading the questions to himself out loud and i'm like please just fucking mute your mic so Sorry, Logan. 
I didn't but have a hate. Was I didn't have a hate. By, by the way, results of the quiz, two quizzes. Uh, quiz one, 90%. Quiz two, 50%. So, <laughs> so uh, pretty good. Seems Classic. like poetic justice to me. Yeah. I got what I deserved. Um, okay. we're gonna do was about unmuting and muting a mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he'd get worse than a 50. No, so yeah, moving I, on. I get, I get a 20% on that. <laughs> All right. Moving on to our love. Um, my love is actually Isaiah Thomas. I watched the video of him crying after dropping 81 in the Drew League, and I don't think I've stopped watching it. That man, I don't know why. I've never really liked him as a player, but that one really got my soul the last two days. And I absolutely love it. It's not even the it's not even the Drew League though. It's some random pro am in Seattle. Isn't it? Yeah, isn't it Jamal Crawford? Jamal Crawford's yeah. league. Sorry. Jamal Crawford's league. Even, he still scored eighty one. Not trying to I wasn't trying to hard correct you. I'm just trying to say like why is he so emotional about it? The league gave up on him, man. I think his knees gave up on him. The Lakers are looking to sign him though. Of course they are. Yeah. The Lakers need touching. another old person. It was touching. It was. Love Isaiah Thomas. That was really sad. Okay, Sean, your love? I got two. Um, so this first one, I don't really know how to say this in a, in a weird, I don't know. I'm just going to say it. I love Andrew Cuomo's <laughs> press conference about <laughs> <laughs> him coming out as not a pervert. No, he's just Italian. That was, so it was a life lesson for everyone. If you're Italian, just tell him I'm not perverted. I'm just super Italian. So that was just hilarious to me. Yeah. Which one's worse? Being a pervert or being Italian? Hey. <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah. Started a beef with Italians, are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a hilarious conference. No, I just saw like the screenshot on Twitter. And it was just his dumb face trying to spin zone his sexual harassment into his ethnicity. It was one of the all time Run around the press conference I've ever seen. Is that if you watch the press conference, I kind of believed him for a second. I was like, "Wow, maybe he does have a point." And then I like took a step back and I was like, "Wait a second, he's just describing sexual harassment and then saying <laughs> I'm Italian afterwards." And so it didn't really work, but it was hilarious nonetheless. All right, I got a second love though. It's uh J.R. Smith. So this one just came out today. J.R. Smith is going back. Trying to go well, he's going back to college at North Carolina State A and T, and he's trying to become part of the golf team. So, any content, I please God, just let him on the team NCAA. Be cool for once, <laughs> just let him play, because the content of him playing a professional, like a NCAA college golf match, would be fucking hilarious. Seeing him hit a putt and then doing his little three point celebration on a bunch mm -hmm. of like five two white kids. That'd be awesome. I don't think he ever played in college for basketball, so he I think he still has his amateur status, and I don't think he's ever made money from golfing. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. The NCAA always has a stick up their ass, so I'm sure they'll ruin it somehow. That's a good point. I was trying to figure out how he'd get around it, but uh, yeah, he didn't play golf in college. He didn't even go to college. So He didn't play basketball in college. Yeah, just let him play. Let JR play. My man free. Yep. Yeah. All right, Mike, your love. My love is What If coming out today, the the Marvel show. Brand new, first episode is out now. Have I haven't watched. watched it yet. No spoilers. Everybody, we're all good. Nothing's going to be spoiled here. Iron Man. But I'm very excited to watch it. Also, just so everybody knows, our producers don't watch, like, anything cool. So. Oh, hey, th this is going to be my love, but I just started Peaky Blinders. I just finished the first episode, so... That's yeah, just great. Cool. All right. You accepted. I can't wait. Yeah, welcome back, Adam. The main complex Marvel plots to you too, though. That's going <laughs> to yeah. happen. Explain <laughs> Marvel to Logan, Adam. Logan, you're, <laughs> you're muted again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, as I was talking to myself, I said, feed me a gummy and... That'd be a great episode. And, and, and we'll talk oh, about Marvel. That's a great episode. It'll, we'll have you watch every single Marvel movie in order Yeah. when you're on a gummy, and you'll be crying by the end of it. Guaranteed. Yeah. 
No, I think it's better. I think it's better if we get high and then try to explain to Logan how the Marvel Cinematic Universe works. But um, yeah, can I eat, can I eat a gummy too? Oh yeah, you of course. <laughs> okay, so I'll just have to be high for this. All right. Yeah. Okay, Adam, do you, would you like to talk more about your love of Peaky Blinders after the first episode? Um, has everybody seen it? I've not uh, seen it. I've seen the first episode. Don't plan on oh. it. I've seen like four seasons of it. Oh, well, yeah, I only saw the first episode, but the ending of it where he he shoots the guy, but he doesn't actually shoot the guy. That was kind of that was kind of a mind, mind fuck right there. A little misdirection. Mm-hmm. Peaky mm-hmm. fucking blinders. Blind as my fucking blinders. Hello, I'm the governor. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I talk. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay, Logan, tell us your love so we can get the hell out of this. I got two loves. They'll be pretty quick. My first love is going to be Outer Banks. Mm. Um, mm. never seen it before, but I know season two just came out, so it's kind of getting buzzed up again. Um, so I started it. it. Never seen it before. But you love it. I love it. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I've se- I haven't seen it up until now. Oh, you're what? Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, so I am on episode three. I finished the first two episodes a couple days ago, and I am hooked. It's so that chick is so money. Yeah, John B. He's a good looking dude. Uh, I would die for John B. Let's talk about that say. more. Yeah. Um. But every episode just ends in a cliffhanger. At least he makes my we- He walk. makes my knees weak. Okay, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, Outer Banks, great show. If you haven't watched it, give it a try. Um, my second love is going to be Qdoba Wednesdays. Um, every Wednesday for the past, past couple of weeks, I've been going to Qdoba, getting the same order, and I feel like they're starting to know me now. Double burrito with – two burritos with extra rice, chicken, pulled pork, um, fajita veggies, cheese – Holy shit! Uh, guacamole. Jesus. So the whole, the whole uh, nine yards. They just, so. Do they just have two balls of tortillas and <laughs> eat and cheese? <laughs> and then Logan eats it in two point two seconds, I, and he's I, like, "Thank you." I walk up. I walk up, and they just start beating in sweat. <laughs> like, oh god! Double burrito guy is back again. Logan, or chicken going. <laughs> Logan opens the door and they go back to the back to get the defibrillators <laughs> to revive him when his heart gives out. Uh, yeah. <sighs> no, and it's and it's pretty much two for the price of one and a half usually. So, heck of a deal. And then I get my large lemonade with it too, which makes my day. I think that's got to be a content in the future is just taking Logan to places and videotaping him eating absurd amounts of food because. My God, it's something to watch if you haven't seen it before. Honestly, my favorite thing to do in my free time. <laughs> it's horrifying watching. The day that we went to Applebee's and I just watched him when they had the endless chicken nuggets or chicken tenders, I never once saw him eat one. It was just a full plate, and then an empty plate over and over again. And I just sat there amazed for like two hours while he didn't stop. It was amazing. Yeah, I love my Applebee's. Well, that was a great... <laughs> That was a great segment of Love Hate. Um, Absolutely electric with Adam and Logan. Now we have a brand new segment uh, that is actually going to be hosted by Adam. This is called Advice. So for a lot of you people who don't know, uh, Reddit has a subreddit where you can basically go. It's called Advice, where people ask questions and they ask for our advice. So without us knowing what the prompt is, Adam and Logan both found one that they had agreed would be pretty funny to hear our advice on. So now, Adam, Logan, whoever wants to share, tell us. Who are we giving advice to today? All right. So this one, the title is, should I tell my girlfriend it was me who got her sister pregnant? All right. So a bit of a backstory. Been with my current girlfriend, six years, happy relationship, etc. One night I was going with her to a family party, but she ended up being, ca- being called into work. As I am still close with her family, I decided I'd still go knowing she would meet me there later. A few hours passed and my girlfriend rang and said she was going to stay, have to stay in all night. I ended up getting super drunk with her sister around my age, and we ended up having unprotected sex. In the morning, we both agreed it was stupid, and we would keep our mouths shut so we didn't break up the family. Anyways, now she was pregnant and told everyone else it was a one-night stand, but it just confirmed mine. My girlfriend is also so excited for her sister to have the baby and is driving me insane. What do I do? Also, 
Sister is keeping the baby, but is not interested in being in me being a dad to it. Family is quite rich, so I don't think she will have any issues supporting the child. Uh, uh, way to keep it light for the very first one, Adam. I really appreciate that, dude. Christ. Um, well, first off, I think it's really fucking funny that after they just totally cheated on like that girl, and they're just like, "Ah, oh, that was dumb, right?" <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a good that. idea. What? Yeah, I probably should have slept with my my girlfriend's sister. Uh oh, what? what am I gonna do? Whoopsie I mean, daisy! Oh my god, Mike, you can go you first. Take this. No, you think you would like wrap it up? At least you know. At the bare minimum. At the bare minimum. Um, Some man, sort of script. My uh, my only suggestion would be like buy a one way ticket to Argentina. And yeah. Never come back. Cause that is country. Leave a note, maybe. Sorry. I don't know how you get back from this one. So you think she shouldn't tell? He shouldn't tell his girlfriend. Wait, I oh, gotta. Sp- I'm gonna spin zone this. Can I spin zone it yet? Go ahead. You leave out the part about getting drunk and having sex with your sister. You import the part saying your sister really wanted to have a baby and asked me since she liked me, <laughs> likes me so much that if I could be the donor and I was the donor to the baby, then technically, then she knows that you're the father. She doesn't know exactly how it happened. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, that way you can still have sneaky links with your sister too. Sneaky links. <laughs> My God. Wow. I don't know. That's, that's a good point, though. Me. Just be like, you're, you're a point. hero. You're a family hero. Yeah. Just be like, you love your sister, right? You want her to be happy, <laughs> to be happy right? Because so do I. And guess what? She's pregnant, babe. We did it. <laughs> you're welcome. You're, you're welcome. welcome. Oh, my God. You're going to be an aunt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna be an uncle dad. An uncle dad. <laughs> <laughs> uncle dad. <laughs> oh my but yeah, God. real advice. Probably just tell her and accept the punishment. That's probably a baseline one. You know, just What's the punishment you think? Um, it's probably murder suit murder. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that that sister would kill her sister's father like that. God, God just, now we're getting the so tragic. Anymore. Left the baby without a father. Um, real advice: you should probably uh, move out of that city, like Mike said. Uh, maybe restart your life somewhere new. Yeah, That's real advice. Yeah, try not to be less of a piece of shit. I w- yeah, I was being genuine. I'm not good with conflict. That would probably ruin me. <laughs> the sister is also a piece of shit too. True. So, yeah. yeah. 100%. yeah. Everybody in the situation is terrible. But she can mask her being a piece of shit with a baby. Say, I can't believe you did that, baby, baby. And then I would forget <laughs> immediately because <laughs> babies are cute. They also suck. Yeah. That's a good point, too. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up our uh, first segment of advice. And I, I think that we really helped this couple get through this. So, good job, everybody. Mm-hmm. You can thank us with money. Thank us with money and follows and likes and listens. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, we're now, Michael and I are going to, I'm putting us on the clock because I promise we won't get out of hand for too long. Um, I know a niche amount of people will probably like this. People who more listen to this for the sports and other stuff might not like it as much, but I think that it's worth talking about because Michael and I are so invested. Um, Bachelorette, Bachelorette talk. talk. So, um, Michael, uh, we both agree that Katie's a piece of shit, right? And we're team Greg. Yeah, I was all for Katie for the majority of the season. Um, and then Greg, just a normal guy, didn't want to be on a reality TV show, told her he loved her. And she was like, all right, but wait two more weeks so I can sleep with these other guys. And then we'll then I'll let you know how you feel. Yeah, and, uh, it, yeah, that was the part that made me so mad. And a caveat for people who don't listen, this Greg guy, um, he prefaced before I saying I love you, saying I've never felt this complete ever since my dad passed away. So his dad passed away when he was pretty – I would say like three, four years ago, said how he hasn't been happy since and how he feel, she feels a hole in his heart and how he's never loved anyone as much as he loves her. And then her response is, I had a really good time with her family tonight. What yeah. the fuck? You don't even acknowledge the words he said to him. I know you don't want to say I love you to somebody until the very end or whatever. Like, 
I've never done a full 180 on a person like I have Katie. Like I really I, liked her, and I now I hate her. I did it all in that one episode. And okay, so when 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 um oh my god, what's the Thanos looking dude's name? Blake. Blake. The guy who won, terrible guy. He Awful. he he was in the last season of The Bachelorette, and he got dumped by two different Bachelorettes, and he fucking won this season. Sorry, spoiler for anybody who hasn't listened. Um, he won this episode. And then he had to meet Katie's mom and her aunt. And her aunt is a bitch on wheels. I don't know a how bitch the guy on did it through. One of the worst people I've ever seen on television. She was awful. That sassy old bitch. Oh, my God. You got to watch it. Like, he was telling her how much he loves this Katie girl. And she was basically saying, that's not enough. Everything he said. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And, and not even to get past the fact, the whole, like, gaslighting thing. I just feel like... It, it, I just think Katie just said the word a thousand times so that people then thought like, oh, yeah, Greg was gaslighting Katie. No, I think Greg was legitimately mad and he was tired of being on the show and she just wanted to keep on saying, trust the process, do 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 do. If, if, if she clearly thought that Greg was going to be the winner or the person that she wanted to marry the whole time, I think you'd probably say screw the process at this point. I think she was kind of dragging Greg along in my mind and I think Blake might have been the winner the whole time, but I, I'm just pissed. I, I'm team Greg all the way and, you know, Katie can – be happy with Thanos. I uh, I I thought she had two good guys with um, the guy with the kid, Michael, and with Michael. Greg, and they were both mm-hmm. normal dudes who didn't want to be on a reality TV show. And she was like, "Oh, I love him so much." Blah, 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 blah. And she then they just left, and then she was like, "Okay, now I got to go with this guy who looks like he has, his head is a Lego." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, it just felt like the guys that she actually like left. So at that point, she was just like, "Fuck it, might as well do this." You know, I don't think she actually had connections with either of those two guys. So I don't know. Um, Adam, Logan, Sean, anything you'd like to add? Sounds like Greg got hosed. Greg got hosed. Also, yeah, I, gotta say. I got one more thing. Bachelor in Paradise is going to be hosted by David Spade. <laughs> I saw right. that, uh, and it's going to be awesome. Right, I'll watch. No, yeah, my- yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like, I feel like we got to watch it at least a couple episodes and break it down on here. David Spade. I just want to see him introduce people. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. I don't even know what a David Spade voice would sound like, but I just feel like you just ask him straight, like, yo, did you guys bang last night? (laughs) Just think of bench warmers. (laughs) Uh, Well, that wraps up our Bachelorette talk. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I could get this off my chest because when I was watching the finale Monday night, I watched like the week before on Sunday and the finale on Monday night, and I was fuming. So I'm happy that I had this time to be able really to. Really sounded like myself. you guys were just venting right there more than explaining. I'm glad you guys upsetting. had to get that off. It was, it was upsetting. upsetting. Greg was a good guy, and Katie you, ruined him. Yeah, you invest all your time in something, and to see that piece of shit happen, uh, mad. We need a bachelor, Jake. We need an act like because the next one's just going to be the bachelorette again. We need one with a man and a bunch of women. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Men. yeah. more bronze. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> All right, that will conclude our Bachelorette talk. Now moving on to our final segment and a one that I think we're all super excited about. This has been a super famous segment on a lot of different podcasts. A lot of people do a different variation of this, but we're going to do one just like it. We're going to try to be original and do our own thing on it. But uh, yeah, so we're going to do drafts. We're going to do drafts. And today our first draft is favorite hangover food, best hangover food, the food that you always go to after a great hangover. The way it's going to work, we're going to do four rounds. It's going to be a snake draft. It will start with somebody. Somebody will have two picks. They'll loop back around. You guys will pick it up quickly. I think it's a pretty easy concept. So I will be a team. Sean will be a team. Mike will be a team. And then we have the greatest combined mind of all time. They probably already share a mind, the hive mind of Adam and Logan. So um, so let's get right into it. I'm holding up a number off camera. I will be 100% honest. Sean, what number am I holding up? One through five. Four. Should Adam and Logan, pick a number. Two. Mike, pick a number. Uh, oh, shit. Um, uh, one. Okay. Um, Adam and Logan, you have one. Please select the order of the draft. Um, Adam, you want to start? We started off and then... On here it goes me, Jake is on the bottom, Mike, and then Sean. Sound good? Sounds good. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, so just to recap the order, it will will be Logan, Logan, Adam, then me, then Mike, then Sean. Snake, correct? Snake draft? Yep. Okay. Snake it. All right. With the first pick in the best hanging over foods draft, Adam and Logan, please make your pick. You want me to take this one, Adam? Yeah, you can take this one. All right. Um, first pick is Taco Bell breakfast. Wow. I just... Wow. Okay. Holy shit. Talk about a bust. <laughs> it's a real Not a bust. God. No. Delicious, but you could have gotten in the third round. Nauseous as fuck. Going to Taco Bell to make yeah. it. Yeah. Even... I think Taco Taco Bell is good when you're drunk, and it's even better when you're hungover. So. Oh, dude, that talks. That's like a big old shit waiting to happen. The, Next see, that, we're that sounds like Sean's and stomach. Have, and I have Taco Bell out. breakfast. You do not get a bite. All right, that's. Fine. I like <laughs> Taco Bell breakfast. I just don't know if I agree with the. My stomach's already hurting. Let me make it hurt even more. So now I'm not only shitting on the toilet, I'm going to be puking into the bathroom. So you know what? It just clears the system out a little more. I feel like so. <laughs> Sean, the, fast, the faster it gets out, the better you feel. Yeah, Sean, do you remember the that horrendous night that me, Mike, and Terry and everyone had at your house? I think sophomore year of yes. high school. Of course. Do you remember what we got? Yeah, we got Taco Bell breakfast. Holy mm-hmm. shit! Man. Oh my god! Did it help? Was it no, great? Was it amazing? I, the best I, thing you've had in the world? No, I think I was still drunk till like seven at night. So I, <laughs> it felt like I threw up hot lava. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I think this is an absolute steal. Um, I can't believe this fell to me at two. I thought this was a clear number one thing of hangover foods. I could be completely wrong. Um, but after a night of drinking, everybody gets up in the morning. What are we gonna do? Best thing ever, head into a Leo's and order a nice stack of pancakes. I think pancakes as a hangover food is amazing, and I'll stand by that. Soaks up all the alcohol in the stomach. feels great. It's a meal that you can eat once and you feel full for a while. I, I love pancakes where I got them. I'll take pancakes. I get, the, I get them in theory. Um, you got to remember, though, when you're hungover, can you even make it out of bed? To get to that, pancakes. I'm thinking convenience. I don't want to sit in. A, I don't want to sit in a bright ass. Leo's. That's mine is. Then, well, then what's your pick going to be? A bag of almonds? Yeah, like. <laughs> no, I'll tell you my pick when I get to it. I think it's going to be a no brainer here. I didn't think it would fall to me at this point. Well, when we put no, this I, out for a vote, this will be interesting to see what side everyone's on. Yeah. Okay, Mike. Let's hear. Let's hear this no brainer number one pick. A sausage egg McMuffin is the number one fast food I or hangover food that you can possibly eat i didn't think it would be there it's unbeatable it's got the grease it's got the cheese it's got the egg and if you get the meal it comes with a hash brown you can't beat that mm. okay so i guess I we're on pick the up michael jordan at number three uh i'm not personally a fan of that item i don't like egg so um oh, sorry lost awesome, my brain. Path. all right well okay i don't like egg <laughs> All right, so I got two swinging back. All right, so I, my first two picks were going to be bread and eggs. But I don't know if that's the same thing as bread and muffin because the combination of both. Like toast. Like just a pe- you can take toast if you want toast. All right. You can't you just claim toast. all of bread. I'm taking toast because I'm my mind says when I'm hangover, I don't want to do anything but I just lay in my bed and just accept my fate and my doom. And the easiest thing in the world to do and the best thing to, like, soak up all the shit in your stomach is just a piece of bread. Just throw it on the toaster, convenient. So that's some great value out there, the fourth pick. And then I'm going to take – oof, on the back half, this is a tough one. I'm going to go with a granola bar. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't see why that's a bad thing. <laughs> Again, convenience. What? I'm thinking convenience. I'm thinking something that would fill me up, gives me some sort of nutrition to continue. I don't have to go anywhere. I usually have a pack of like granola bars laying around somewhere. Like you just grab one of those, boom. Get my toast, I get my granola bar, and I'm somewhat functional. Okay. I'm, I don't see the problem I'm with the granola bar. Kind of speechless. This is going to be the most polarizing draft ever. And to yeah. see where people end up lining up with these picks, I'm just like, Really curious because I think we're all heading in very, very different directions of what we think hangover food is. It's basically going to be like who who likes the foods that we pick the most. Okay, all right. 
So with my next pick, it's the it's the winning pick again. It's Pedialyte. It's not a food. That's not a food. <laughs> that yeah. Hangover. I wow. Just, I was gonna say water. Take over an electrolyte food. item. Veto. Veto. Wow. Veto Pedialyte for a hangover. Veto. It's best. Veto. The draft was best hangover foods, food. Mike. Not best cure for a wow. hangover. Mm. That would have been clear. What everyone? Well, my next pick will be water. Yeah. <laughs> you could have picked water. I don't know what. I don't know what the issue was. It's best hangover foods. That's the name of the draft. That's what I prefer it as. Pedo light okay. is not a food. Okay. I feel. Mm. All right. All right. All right. Oh. Um. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. All three of us. All other. All the other three of us agree. Adam right? didn't agree. He, he was going to draft water. I'll go with a banana. Oh, okay. That was my pick. That was also on my banana. Was also on my board. That that's a really board. good selection. Oh, good pick, Mike. That's a really Thank good you. pick. That's I think that's the first pick we can all in, uh, unanimously agree. That was a yeah. really good pick. Damn. Well done, Mike. I still Damn. agree with my granola pick. I don't. Okay. I, um, what do you guys have against granola? I don't understand. The Orlando Magic in the draft right now. I think the toast pick was worse than granola. <laughs> I, I disagree. What's the number one thing to eat when you? What's the number one thing everyone tells you to eat when you're hungover or drunk? Bread. What's the one thing that's going to solve your hangover? Bread. Toast. I thought that was more so like in the at the end of the yeah. night when you're drunk. It's the same thing when you're lying on the bathroom floor. Yeah. So yeah. When you're right at you. When yeah. you're feeling like, oh joy, do I feel better? You yeah. Just some bread. Yeah. When you're, oh joy, do I feel better? Moment. Okay, I, I ate a lot of bread. I, I, I like this pick that got back to me. Um, I'm just gonna go with you're hungover. Once you finally got into college, your parents were cool with you drinking. They let have people come over. Um, I know this is a go-to for almost every single parent cooking their kid hungover food. Bacon. Gonna go with bacon. Mm -hmm. I think it's that's a good Jake. selection. Right. I think it's really good. Um, and it just grease i just think if you're going with something with grease on hangover food always good yep good move yeah. i agree that's a good pick all right okay. i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with a nice fruit smoothie oh maybe with some okay, butter but... in it without banana you're gonna say hear me out though where are we on a smoothie as a drink versus a food smoothie that's a, is a food i would say that's a, a food smoothie is a food there's food it's mixed thick. into it. It's just it's blended thick. food. You drink it with a straw. But does that constitute? You could, you could ground up a, a chicken breast and drink it with a straw. <laughs> you could. Would that be a smooth? I think that would be a smoothie, and I think it would be a beverage. I think that would be blended yeah. chicken. Yeah. Whatever. I feel like I'm being picked on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um um, your guys' second pick of this round, you get back-to-back -back picks. Oh, shit. Adam, you got one lined up. You can take it. I'll take the last one. Uh, nope, I don't. Do you? Right. Oh, <laughs> they're panicking. Has <laughs> scrambled eggs been taken yet? No. Scrambled eggs? You're good on that. Some good old-fashioned scrambled eggs and cheese? God damn it. Strong. I, I don't uh, – yeah, it's classic. I, it's, I don't think you can beat that. It's – Settles the tummy down a little bit, gets your tummy full. Good pick. I agree with that. Okay, this is a, a go-to to mine of if uh, I'm waking up at like basically 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, it's already lunch. I've missed breakfast. I've completely missed breakfast. And you know what I'd go with? Right here in East Lansing, I go to the best thing here, and that is wings, chicken wings <laughs> from Meat Southern Barbecue with – just a tiny share of barbecue sauce. So good. So, so, so good. I'm going to take, I'm going to take chicken wings, parentheses, meat, Southern barbecue. I, I get where you're okay. coming from. Great wings, first of yeah. all. But I think that's, to me, that's more of a drunk food than a, than a hangover food. Well, they're not open during drunk hours. And honestly, they too much work. Eight. Too much work for being hungover. I agree. Yeah. I'm willing to do the work sometimes if I know what I want. You're a better man than I am. Me too. My next pick is a Wendy's four for four. Okay. Yeah, yep. yeah that's value. Burger, I like that. It's good value. Fries, burger, nuggets, and then my the the creme de la creme for me is the frosty. Oh, frosty. Yeah. 
I don't like, no, that's a good pick. That's good value. Yeah. So should the burger. Yep. All right, we going to me now. Yep. Cool. We got some choices here. All right, I'm gonna go with watermelon. Ooh. I think watermelon's a good. It's got water in it. You need to drink a lot of water. You need to get some sort of thing in your body besides an actual bottle of water. So that's a good way to get in there. Good fruit. I don't mind that pick. And then this is the same one, it's kind of the same line as Jacob. Like if you want, if you're going out to like a Coney or something, like a breakfast burger, like a burger with an egg on top of it. It's got everything you need in it, egg, meat, carbs, all that. So I'm going to go to breakfast burger with my last pick. All right. Good pick. My last pick is going to be a popsicle. There's nothing Ooh. Better. If you've never, if you've been hungover, try a popsicle. If you've never done it, well, I've never heard. Really of it. helps. I'll do it. It's really good. Hmm. It calms the headache down, eases the stomach. Popsicles. Popsicles. Hmm. Popsicles. All right. I'm just, one. I have, I have one more. Um, hmm. I'm just trying to think exactly where I want to go with this. I like have no idea where to go. I, I've gone everywhere but a fruit. Uh, or some kind of vegetable or something. So I, I'll write out my order with this kind of another uh, thing that I just love, especially when I'm hungover. Um, I love grapes. I feel like for some reason, grapes taste even better when I'm hungover for some reason. Uh, they're delicious. I can plop like six of them in my mouth at the same time. Uh, and it's just so good. <laughs> what? Did I say something weird? Hear you out. Plops. Oh, I got you. Out my mouth. Have you ever tried frozen grapes? I have not. Give that a try. Delicious. Okay. Note taken. Next time I feel like getting hung over or getting drunk, I'm just going to shove That's some grapes pick. in the freezer. Do it. I like that pick a lot too. It's convenience. I think it's just whatever you can find in your fridge that you would just feel like it's palatable at the moment. And so that's why I think granola bar is the steal of the draft. Yeah. Okay, Logan and Adam, what's your last pick? <laughs> Take care. Uh, all right. If we're going like the most convenient, I would say just a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Ooh. You can whip it up in less than a minute. That's a really good one. Yeah, good pick. Good pick. Strong. Strong end to the draft. Strong end. Wow. Anybody got any honorable mentions? I don't have any. I don't right even. There. All Star Coney Island's Big Buck Sandwich, kind of, kind of Sean's, but yeah, I just specific. like to shout out All Star Coney Island. I think we've touched. It's kind of tough when you like. Not a lot of things are great when you're hungover. Yeah. I know we couldn't do like liquids, but just a cup of coffee is great. I just Ooh. looked up eight best hangover foods. Coffee was number one. Smoothies, eggs, chicken noodle soup. Oh, good one. I, I guess it's easier. And then salmon. Ugh, that's <laughs> atrocious. Salmon. John salmon. salmon. But I can't yeah, see John's super salty salmon yeah, makes you drink a bunch of water so you feel hydrated. I can see myself whipping up some salmon on the grill when I'm fucking throwing up. I don't know how long I go over with my body. You know, you know what's one for me? You guys could possibly disagree. Um, I'm curious to see what you guys think, but – any kind of like nut, like a peanut or like a cashew or something like that, absolutely love. Any kind of nut? You can play. <laughs> like anything like salty, like anything that I could just like throw into my mouth and just like like really really salty, you know? Jake, like David, sometimes you're digging yourself into a hole. Right here. Well, I don't I don't mm. understand. Like when you really have to get it going and you grab and you grab and you grab and then eventually the you just toss it in your mouth. Plop six grapes in your mouth, then you plop a couple <laughs> nuts of any variety right in there. Jake is right, though. You can't forget about the nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if you neglect the nuts, you're going to regret it. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> 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 the, 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 that, strong, that I think that's a strong end. Wait. Yeah. yeah. I got one more thing. Sean, Jake, neither of you used the word of the day. Yes, I did. And Jake so, did. Like, no, you got times. vetoed. He got Jake used No, this? I did it with no, barbecue did, yeah. sauce. You missed I did it, it with barbecue I sauce on chicken wings. Yeah. I missed it. All right. Well, Sean, you got to put it Sean was unsuccessful, though. So. I completely forgot about Skerrick. Shit. What should, what should I do now? Uh, I think we agreed on a punishment. Yeah. Maybe? 
You know yep. the rules. All right, I guess I'll pull it out. <laughs> pull it out. <laughs> um, so because I feel nothing right now. I'm no, okay. bad for not saying Skerrick. Oh, well, you but just said it. So. I have a Skerrick of shame. Oh, huh? oh. Well, okay, uh-huh. we'll, we'll, we'll cut some, we'll cut some second grief. save, buzzer beer. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll cut him some slack for the first episode, but uh, this is the first episode of the new format with Adam and Logan joining us, pr- producers, a draft, some advice. Great episode, boys. It was fun talking. Can't wait for the next one. Um, of course, you can listen anywhere you listen to podcasts on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can watch us on YouTube at Loth11. I post every single uh, recording of this. So if you want to see me sh- plop grapes in my mouth or shovel a nut in my face, um, you can watch that there. Uh, we obviously told you guys what the word of the day was, but moving forward, uh, we're not going to tell you, and it's going to be your job to guess what it is. And then also, uh, we'll put up a poll of things that we might do for our next draft. You guys can vote on that and tell us what we need to do. So, um, until next time, thank you all for joining us and peace.